Hey you folks, Quill18 here, and welcome to another episode of uh, the Mostly Civilized Hex Engine here in Unity. Last a couple episodes, we went and started setting up the code for some rudimentary movement. I feel like it went a little slow, had meant to cover a little bit more, so sorry about the pace, and we're going to try to uh, rip through a little bit more today as we move towards proper movement coding for our little unit. But basically, what we want to do is be able to um, ha select the unit um, and then right-click on a tile and have him uh, organize a pathfinding, a proper path to get there in the most efficient number of moves, um, and then start executing that queued sequence of tiled moves in a way that looks just about right. Instead of, you know, this sort of, we're just hitting the space bar and it's just moving one over and then it's looping there, loop to the other side of the screen. Um, the other thing we can do uh, for our character, and we'll probably do that later, is uh, we'll only actually do the smooth movement if the character is actually on the screen. Otherwise, we'll just do the inch to teleport, which will uh, speed up some of the turn processing, for example. Okay, but the very first thing we have to do, and what we're going to be looking at today is not that code, but the... Hang on a sec. The mouse controller code. What do I call that? Mouse controller. Camera mouse controller? That's not right. Is it? Why would I call it camera mouse controller? There should just be a mouse controller script. I feel like I had a brain derp somewhere along the way. We have the camera keyboard controller and the camera mouse controller. I guess that was part of it. Let me close a bunch of these uh, little script windows over here. Um, is dragon camera true or false? Because what that's not really what we want here. You know what? I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to rename this script to just mouse controller. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to close this. And I'm just going to rename this thing to mouse controller. Because the whole idea was to have a single centralized mouse controller that is aware of context. This, rather than have a script attached to the camera that controls its movement and does mouse things, we have a single mouse controller over here, and its job is to, um, is to know everything about the mouse and do things in the right way, and, you know, dispatch messages in the appropriate manner. So let me just make sure we've still got all of our connections right. Okay, you're linked to mouse controller. Everything is groovy. Okay, lovely. So what we're going to do is we're going to put in um, a sort of a logic here where our update routine is responsible for calling the correct mouse handling function um, on each go here. Um, and we can organize some of our script to split out, split out things that are supposed to be... Um, you know, things for the camera movement, for things for the unit movement, what else can we have? Um, if uh, if we click on a city, for example, open something up, uh, be aware of UI stuff, all, all that kind of jazz, right? I mean, this is going to grow over time, but we can build that very organically. So what we're going to make use of is, and we did this a little bit somewhere else. Where do we use the delegate for? Oh, for the... Um, the notices when the unit moves, right? We've got this delegate, and we'll probably rewrite this because I wasn't, I don't know. For some reason, I'm not satisfied with the way that this came out, and I'm not satisfied with my explanation for it, but ultimately I was like, well, I did it, let's move on and, and just try to improve things as we go forward. But yes, we will make use of delegates again. Um, and this doesn't have to be public. This is going to be just a uh, delegate, if I can remember how to spell it properly. What we're going to do here is we're going to define the, a sort of template for a function that's going to return nothing. It's just going to be called, like, we're going to name our func our template update func, basically. Um, and it's going to take no parameters at all. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pair this with an internal variable that is going to be um, update current func. So this is a variable that's going to hold a basically a pointer to a function that we're going to run on each update frame. And what we're going to have is our update routine over here. So I'm going to break this. Well, actually, it'll probably be easier to name this. So this is going to be the update uh, camera drag. Okay, this is the, the behavior that's going to drag the camera around and move things about. Um, we'll pull a couple things out of here in a second, but that means we need a new update function over here. And its job is simply going to be to call our current update func. It's going to do a little bit more, but that's basically it. And our update func is going to start by being set. Well, actually, it's going to be set to something completely different, uh, which is going to be update um, detect mode start or something like that. Okay. This function's job is simply to figure out from the current context, what, what, what is the mouse behavior? What is the correct mouse behavior in this particular situation? So that's going to be the default 
function over here that's going to get called every frame. And what this is going to do every frame is do a few things like, for example, and I mean, we'll add some extra checks in here, but like this is, burr, oh, wrong button. There we go. This is left mouse button just went down. So the question is, if the left mouse button just went down, what mode should we start, if any? Um, this, um, well, this actually changes. The mouse button going down is actually an interesting question because if I think about most civilization style games, I can't really think of much that starts happening when the button goes down. It's when the button goes up normally that something happens or if something moves while the button is down. I, let's say you click on a unit, okay? Now, usually it's you click and, and a click is you, you push the mouse button down and then you release it. So it's often that releasing the mouse button while over a unit causes you to select the unit, for example. So we don't necessarily want to select the unit just if the left mouse button goes down on top of it. Likewise, dragging does not start just by pushing the mouse button down. The camera dragging action is something that starts if the mouse is down and the mouse moves, then we start a camera drag action. And that's very important because you've got to imagine the situation where you push your mouse down over a unit, but then you, you start dragging the mouse. You're not trying to select a unit, you're trying to drag the camera. And you don't want it so that when you let go of the mouse, that it selects the unit, either the unit that was there when your mouse was pushed down or the unit that you're now there when you release the mouse. You don't want either one of those behaviors. Every now and again, you got a game where something like that happens and it's really bad. In fact, I think Civ 6 might have had a funky glitch at release where if you let go of the button while dragging and you let it go on top of like a city name or something like that, it like opened the city name or it opened the city screen. I, I, it might not have been Civ, it might have been something else, but I'm pretty sure that was the case. So really what we want to do is we want to have a little bit more awareness. Like, so left mouse button went down. This doesn't do anything by itself, really. Um, so we could actually just kind of ignore this. We could literally do nothing because it's more something like, has the camera moved? Um, so we have last mouse position. Now, this is our old code. And what is that a reference to? Is that the... Um, the position on screen? No, that's the hit position. So we're going to rename this. Um, last mouse um, ground plane position. Okay, This is the last spot the mouse was on the ground plane, the y equals zero plane that we use for camera dragging. This is not quite the same. So what we actually want to do is we want to keep track. And honestly, we probably just want to grab this every single frame um, automatically is something like, uh, I need to be reminded of something, input dot mouse position. As I say, it's probably still a vector three. Like you could define this as a vector two, but I think this is older than the 2D system. So yeah, vector three is fine. So this is going to be, we'll have like little blocks of codes here. Um, uh, camera dragging uh, bookkeeping variables. And then over here we'll have generic bookkeeping variables. Uh, because here I want a vector 3 that is last mouse position. And this is the um, from input dot mouse position. So this is the position of the mouse on the screen. This is actually the mouse pixel coordinates. Okay, but it's called mouse position here, so we'll just call it last mouse position here rather than use a more descriptive name. We'll use the more descriptive name here. Really long ass name, but it's gonna work. So every frame, the update, we're gonna run the current frame function, and then what are the things we're gonna make sure to do, because this is like a no-brainer and something we're always gonna want, we'll just store the last mouse position. This can be handy, this could be used by several different things. But one thing in particular is something like this. Um, so we'll have an else. So this, you know, on this frame, we didn't go down the right mouse button. You know, we'll probably have a whole se series of these little various checks. So here we're going to have an else if, if, um, input dot mouse, get mouse button, 
0. This will return true if the mouse is currently down. Remember, get mouse button down returns true if the mouse was pressed this frame and this frame only. Only returns true once, no matter how long you hold it down, whereas this one will return true every single frame while the button's being held down. So if the mouse button is being held down and input dot mouse position, not mouse present, position, potatoes, is not equal to last mouse position, okay? This means left button is being held down and the mouse moved. That's a camera drag. Okay, so there we go. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna change modes. We're gonna say that from now on, we're gonna set the mode. Our current update function is going to be update camera drag, like that. So that will run every single frame until we're done dragging. Now, when are we done dragging? So probably we're gonna need some sort of escape routine over here. So if input dot get mouse button up, so if we release the left mouse button, then we are going to cancel this mode, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do as a helper, I'm gonna say something like void cancel update funk or something like that. And its job is just going to be to reset the tech mode start, and then also do cleanup of any UI stuff associated with modes. We're going to do it very simply in one centralized location to clean everything up. For example, if we had a unit selected and we were holding down the right mouse button to try to move the unit somewhere, as we move you know, our mouse around, we're going to want to see a path that goes from the unit's current position to where our mouse is, as long as we hold down the right mouse button. And then when we release the right mouse button, that is the end of the I'm trying to pick a movement mode. It should lock in the movement at that point, but one of the things it should clean up is the lines that show the path that our, our unit is gonna take. Um, we'll also over here do a universal thing, which is going to be if input.getKeyDown, keycode.escape. If you hit the escape button, that should cancel any mode you're in dragging, moving the unit around, that sort of thing. And it should just cancel it outright, which won't be the same as executing, say, the unit move, right? So again, we'll just call cancel update func like that. So if you hit the escape key, we'll cancel update func, and then we'll just sit around listening for um, a new mode start because that's what happens over here. All right, groovy, groovy. So um, if we let go of the left mouse, left mouse button, then we want to stop dragging. So we'll just call cancel update func and then return over here. Now, there's gonna be a little bit in the current build, a little bit of a delay in that it won't do the mouse drag on the very first frame right now because um, this is the frame where we detect the mouse move and when we start this mode, but it actually won't start the drag right away. So we've gotta go ahead and do that. Um, so we've gotta we got to figure something out. We might actually wanna break up the camera drag behavior to, we might want to have a start camera drag that sets up a few things. Uh, there's a few different possibilities. Um, we could call this immediately. That might be a good idea, is just say something like, update current, like set the new current funk and then call it right away, which will call update camera drag. So it'll check for the escape, that's gonna be fine. It's gonna do the screen point array, but it's gonna do that based on the current mouse position as opposed to the last mouse position. Which means there's always going to be a slight delay. Hmm. Because the first frame it won't do anything. We can just, we can confirm that. Uh, first of all, we can check to see if I've made any syntax errors, which is very likely. Oh, you can't do that. Okay, that's fine. So we'll just move it to the start. Update um, current function is going to be equal to this. So we'll set that in the start as opposed to the class definition. Okay, no more syntax errors. Let's take a look for logic errors. Ooh. 
And then all the dragon breaks. Why four is that? It does it once and then it stops. Not the camera drag. Call this, and every frame that gets called, this doesn't run. This doesn't affect our camera code. This shouldn't be getting called. Debug.log canceling camera drag. I mean, this used to be our update function, and we should then at that point be doing stuff. Um, uh, right. So this is where we used to do the detection to see if the camera is dragging, right? If get mouse button down, which never turns out to be true. So we don't need to do this is dragging camera code, because if this code is running, the camera is being dragged. So we can purge this. This function will only get called if the camera is supposed to be running and it bails itself. We actually don't need the is camera drag code hot all. We can actually get rid of um, this. Okay, no compilation errors. All right, well, the camera dragging is working okay. But the initial the initial position's not right. which seems a little bit odd. Because what happens in the start? Oh, it sets the last, okay, there we go. When the, the, the dragging is supposed to start, it's supposed to set this on the first go. Okay, so there was something missing here. So this is like, this is the thing, this is the line we have to do if it's the very first fa um, uh, round of this dragging. So... Do, 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 do. Alright, well, I guess we can do this just fine. Um, we're gonna do a little function which is going to be mouse to ground plane, vector three, mouse pause. This function's job is to run this code here, returning this. There we go. So this is just going to be um, uh, mouse to ground plane. It's going to run that every frame. And then what's going on? Hold on. Did we do the same code twice? Was that what we were doing here? No. Yes. Okay, hold on. 
I think I remember now that we were doing the, the same code twice. We're like, we're going to fix it later. Well, let's fix it now. Mouse direction. Oh, I see. We do it, then we move the camera, then we do the calculation again to upgrade the last mouse position. Okay, that's fine. Anyway, the the whole deal is that on the first go here, we need to be able to say that the last mouse grand plane position, we need to set it when we enter the drag mode over here. Alright, let's give that a go. Uh, return, I don't know, vector 3.0. Right, which probably actually we just don't want anything. But that's fine. There we go. And it feels correct again. Okay. So sorry about that. I, I, I was, you know, it's been it's been a week since the last time I wrote that code, and I was like, this doesn't look quite right, and there was some replica er, duplication, but I do remember it now. So the upshot of this, though, is that our camera drag code is a lot simpler. That being said, we, our mouse wheel scroll is actually, right now, won't run, because our mouse wheel, I don't want to pause, our mouse wheel only runs while we're dragging, so if I... Mouse wheel now nothing. If I start dragging and then I mouse wheel, we're okay. Because all of our mouse scrolling stuff is only happening within all this code here. So we need to cut this out. And yeah, this is all the scrolling code. We're going to cut all this out. Void. Um, I'll, I'll be consistent in calling like update. Um, scroll zoom but it's not actually going to be something we probably apply into that move camera towards hit pause so we just need to grab the, uh, the hit pause again like that and we're going to make sure this runs every single frame regardless like this so regardless of mode, well, that's not necessarily true. We might still want to check on things. There might be certain modes where we want to ignore the scroll wheel. Like, for example, when we're over a UI list element, but that's something else. So now I can scroll normally, and I can do that. Okay, that was a little bit more work than expected. But now we have a system where we can have various mode selections. Check for you, like being over uh, scrolling UI later. So that's going to be that. All right, so back into detect mode start. The thing we want to do here is say something like, um, else if. So if um, input.get mouse button up. Okay. Obviously, we're not dragging if the mouse isn't down, is, is being released. But at this point, the mouse has been released on something. Um, and it's important to note that this will not execute. I'm going to do a little check here. I'm going to show you an example. For what I, I'm, I haven't said what I'm going to say, but I'm going to show you something. And this will illustrate something better. Mouse up click. Okay. So if we go and hit play after a compile. So I'm just going to tap right mouse button, and it's not going to do anything. Okay. What? 
What? Clearly missing something here. Mouse down. Oh! There, it's because I'm right clicking. Why am I right clicking? Because I'm an idiot. Anyway, yeah, I was. I don't know why I was right clicking and nothing was working. Because that's the thing. Okay, so I'm gonna push down, mouse down, I'm gonna release, mouse up. Oh, wait, that's interesting. I must have shaken the mouse a little bit. There you go. Mouse down, mouse up. Mouse down, move the screen around, release, no mouse up. That's exactly what I mean. So if we click and we drag the camera and then we mouse up, it's gonna, um, it's not triggering the mouse up code. Why is that? That, and this is correct, this is what we want. It's because update detect mode start only runs if we're not in a mode. So if we're in, uh, if we've set the mode to camera drag, then all we're running is here and then on mouse up, I mean, we're canceling out of this mode completely, but that frame where we release the mouse, this function is never being called, which is exactly what I want in this case. Now, what we might want to do, you might want to consider just to avoid like a one pixel jitter is making it so that, you know, you need to move a little bit more than a single pixel, maybe to start a camera drag is an idea, but it might not be a problem, but you could, we could, uh, we could look into making a little bit of a threshold there for the drag start, which might not be a bad idea. Oh, let's put in a little, um, to do consider adding in a thresh hold to the, um, position check. For example, uh, do something like, since the mouse position contains pixel coordinates, you could do something like uh, vector3 dot distance. You know what? Maybe we'll just do that. Because we can always just set the threshold to zero, right? Um, something like, uh, oh, and again, I don't need the is dragon camera anymore, right? Because that's all gone. Yeah. yeah. Um, int uh, mouse drag threshold equals um, one, all right? Threshold of mouse movement to start a uh, drag. You could actually set it to zero, but this, you know, might end up looking a little bit better. It stops anyone from shaking hands, shaky hands like me from accidentally triggering mouse drags. So then instead what you do is you say, if the mouse button is currently being held down and vector three dot distance between the current mouse position and the last mouse position is greater than mouse drag threshold. So there you go. That's the number, the amount you have to exceed. So if you set it to one, a one pixel movement won't do anything. Let's see if I can like cause that to happen. It's going to be tough. So I'm just going to move the mouse slightly. Nope, that was too much. Like, there we go. I think that did it. I think I might have moved my mouse one pixel there. There's, I think that's one pixel. Perfect. So a one pixel little whatever doesn't start a drag, but anything more than that. See, I mean, and you might even want to give it like a four pixel like barrier because who wants to do like a tiny little thing when you're dragging it's usually going to be a pretty definitive motion so it might actually be better that way but you know i'll leave that to you guys to tune um doo -doo 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 -doo. right so this might be a good place to put in a cut now that we've redesigned this and i'm happy about that a lot it's gonna make because we're gonna add a lot more sort of like different mouse modes and again keep everything centralized here it's gonna be a good way to organize that kind of logic um but the big thing is if we've left the mouse button up, it's going to be something like to do. Um, are we clicking on a tile or a hex, I suppose, with a unit? If so, select it. And then what we can do is pair this with something like else if um, input dot uh, get mouse button one, which is your middle mouse button. Um, so if something like, uh, so we could have something like uh, unit movement, unit uh, selected unit, which will default to null, but we're gonna make it explicit anyway, just to be clear. So something like um, if the right mouse button is being held down and actually if, if selected units not equal to null, and input.getMouseButton1 is down. We have a selected unit 
and we are holding down the mouse button. We are in unit movement mode. Show um, a path from unit to mouse position via the pathfinding system. And so this is gonna be a new type of update function, which I will name now. Tell you what, we'll do that. Uh, so this is gonna be something like void update unit movement. And it's also gonna have a check for get mouse button up. Remember, you can always escape out of all these modes, so that's gonna be fine. But if get mouse up one, then here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna say, it's not gonna be cancel camera drag. It's actually going to be um, complete unit movement. So to do copy pathfinding path to units movement queue. All right, so when you release the mouse button, whatever the current path you know, from point A to point B is, we're gonna copy that to the unit, so the unit itself is gonna be aware that it's gonna have some sort of movement queue in there, um, and we're gonna copy it in there. And presumably, if that unit has movement left right now, then what it's going to do is it's actually going to start actually doing the movement right away, right? Think about Civ. If um, you select a unit that's got, say, two movement, and then you right-click somewhere in the distance, and you release the right mouse button, what it's going to do is it's going to use its two units of movement up right away, um, and then remember whatever is left in the queue for next turn. Or if a unit has no movement left, then it doesn't move right away this turn, but it will have everything in queued for the following turns, for example. So that's what we're going to work on next time. Um, and, well, it's probably going to take a couple episodes to get the A-star stuff. Now, we've done a star tutorials before so i'm not going to be focusing on writing the a star pathfinding code what i am going to focus on is actually taking some of the what we've basically written before i mean i'll be rewriting it but um not explaining it the same way what we're going to try to do is make it more generic so we'll have a generic a star script that we can just feed in um a a a class like unit and like hex that is sort of generic um, and actually probably based on a on an interface, um, as well as using delegates to pass functions for movement calculation and things like that. So we'll have a one-size-fits-all A-star code for any program we make going forward, which is going to be very handy-dandy. Thanks for watching, folks. See you next time. Hey, uh, I want to say a great big thank you to all the June Patreon supporters and these mic check supporters. We've got Yukofin, Eric Sumner, Tiburon, Mighty Mix, Pavel Zdanov, Drazion, Michael McClintock, Aaron Toyson, Craig Mortel, the not so evil engineer, Julien Auger Lafont, Marius Field Vold, Speedy Savant, Valen Cakeveen, Thomas Oberson, Jason Yanity, Stephen Bonnerman, Kale the Quick, and Neil Blakey Milner, and absolutely everyone who watches, shares, favorites, and subscribes to these videos. Thank you so, so much.